I thank the witness for their testimony. The chair now recognizes Mr. Keddy for five minutes. Talofa Lahwa, Afade, Aloha, and hello to everyone, distinguished guests here. Let me just uh, briefly uh, uh, go on record and respectfully uh, correct a misstatement by my new friend, uh, Ambassador Yoon. Uh, Romola was never for sale to anybody, and it cannot be. It's a constitutionally uh, prohibited. Let me, uh, honorable members, share a brief history of the Marshall Islands sacrifice with the United States and the special and unique relationship that we have. World War II, when the Japanese were all over the Pacific, including the Marshall Islands, our scout played a major role in showing where the Japanese were so that the uh, armed forces can capture the region uh, smoothly. Later on in 1946 to 58, uh, the, another war, we were in the middle of it again without no choice, the Cold War, the former Soviet Union with the United States, Marshall Island was in the middle of it also. This is where the massive display of power, a United States armament power, when the 67 bomb was tested, especially the Bravo shot uh, 15 megaton, it was displayed in the Marshall Island. And we believe that's when the war, Cold War started to recede. Unfortunately, as a result, a lot of cancer, a lot of environmental damages, food contaminated, land contaminated. My parents died, one of lung cancer, metastatic brain tumor from the lung. My father never spoke, but he had the cancer. My mother had a total thyroidectomy removed, and she also died prematurely while I was still in elementary school. And this is another unique story for me. Rest of the Marshall Islands and most family have gone through the same. <clears throat> Let me further state this for a record. Question another one on the Marshall Islands. It's a premier military site. That's another sacrifice, giving our traditional land for military installation. In the event that there's any warhead coming from who knows where, Marshall Island Kwajalein Base will be the first shield of defense before anything could hit Guam, Hawaii, California, Washington DC for that matter. That is in the Marshall Islands. Our armed forces, as stated earlier, highest per capita of enrollment of our young men and women are from the region, including Palau, FSM, and RMI. We are serving and we served in Afghanistan and also in Iraq and continue to serve today even without the benefit of our returning veterans, as we spoke about earlier. The record in the United Nations, aside from Israel being the first to vote with the United States, please take a look who's second and third most of the time. That's Marshall Islands. This is our commitment. We are here to stay 20 years. Do you want 50 years? We'll go for another 50 years. I want to thank my colleague, Ambassador Yoon, for securing a, a MOU with our former chief negotiator and former minister. It was a good MOU, but we are here to try to see if we can make it better, to meet the need of our people. Not once, the need of our people in this special and unique relationship. There are several, uh, several uh, uh, good things in the MOU, the sector grant annually, and then the nuclear museum, climate change, uh, seed money, which is really important. Securing the Marshall Island is securing the United States. You have the Kwajalein in the middle of it all. And I can list several others, but let me get into the, uh, uh, the shenanigan that I get to hear a lot from the State Department and a couple other places, and it was mentioned here today. Full and final settlement, they always say, under the compact section 177. By the way, there is no such word in the compact as final. Only full settlement in Article 10 of the compact, insofar as Article 9, it is just and adequately paid. And when it is not just and adequately paid, it will never be final. Let me continue on <clears throat> with the, uh, the treaty between the two countries. We agree that we have to establish a nuclear claims tribunal, and we did. 
that the tribunal was supposed to aggregate the claim, and they did. And what was the number they came up with? 3.188 billion. That's not my number. That's neither your number. It is the tribunal's number under the treaty that we agreed that is supposed to be established to address this issue. You know, and then President Obama panel uh, report of 2009, cancer panel report, it says that United States Congress must pay the tribunal's award. And let me further go on. Uh, Special Human Rights Council from the United Nations came to Marshall Island, came out with a report, and I, I think it's important that I quote some of his finding. Quote, the nuclear testing result both immediate and continued effects on the human rights of Marshallese. And he made recommendations such as, guarantee, quote, we have to guarantee right an effective remedy for the Marshallese, including by providing full funding for the nuclear claims tribunal and award adequate compensation of the past future claims. And he further asked that the United States go on record in apologizing to the Marshall Islands. We're here to get an apology. Let me put some number in perspective, Your Honor. Nevada test site, 6.3 billion curies of iodine 131. Rather, that's the Marshall Islands number. Nevada test site was 150 million curies of iodine 31 exposure. Nevada test site, 1,403 kiloton of explosive yields, Marshall Island, 108,496 ex explosive yields. And the compensation for Nevada test sites, it's close to $4 billion now, as we speak. Marshall Island was $150 million. So lastly, like let, me, let me wrap it up, uh, Your Honor. Lastly, I'd like to also <clears throat> ask that we assist our Marshallese, your fellow citizens that are in the United States, to be eligible to all the federal program that they are eligible or should be eligible to. They're taxpayer, they work, they pay a tax, they're business people, they own their homes, yet when it comes to try to reap the benefit, they're not given the opportunity. So we look forward to actions on this listed item above, and we humbly request that we address these needs today as we are ready to, once we address these needs today, we are ready to sign the compact tomorrow. A compact signed should be a compact that you United States and we, Marshall Island, are happy to sign up to. We are committed, as we have been, and we'll continue to commit ourselves. Thank you. This question is for the Honorable Kenneth Keddy, Speaker, the Parliament of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Should negotiations between the U.S. and RMI continue past the September 30 deadline? What is the view of your government on how the U.S. should approach Palau and FSM compacts do you believe the U.S. should hold Palau and FSM compacts until it completes negotiations with the MRI, uh, RMI? And what mechanisms are in place to ensure that trust fund money is managed and used responsibly and in the manner for which they were intended? Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Madam Chair. In past right now with RMI's negotiation is the nuclear injustice. When I first met with Ambassador Yoon in May, we both agree that it is better that we conclude that deal sooner rather than later. And I went back and pushed for that. But as it stands with the MOU, uh, Your Honor and members, it is unlikely that the parliament will adopt it as is and they've expressed that in the parliament. So we hope while we're here, we will modify it some, and we've submitted and sent a letter to Ambassador Yoon to address a couple of those issues. So when we go back home, we'll be able to convince the leadership back home that this is a better deal. So in regards to uh, uh, ensure management of the funds are in order, we adopted two legislations, development authorities, where they will safeguard the new funding that will be coming through the trust fund and then disperse onto the development authorities. And these development authorities are required by the new laws to report to the cabinet and the delay, both. And then these financial reports will be verified with the other generals every year instead of waiting for five years and then we get to see the report. It's required annually. So this is a mechanism we already put in place to address the issue. We know the beginning issue it's a grave issue for all of us, both you and ourselves, government back home. Unfortunately, we play no role in any of it. 
it was the Department of Interior that pretty much let go of their responsibility. So this is why we're at here. And we also look at what the leadership of Bikini did. And we're trying to address that as well at the same time. Your testimony reads that your government is preparing for negotiations to continue past the September 30 deadline. You've requested that Congress should continue current funding levels for RMI as negotiations continue. Can you confirm with us that the RMI negotiation team will prioritize concluding the negotiations before the September 30 deadline? We, the goal is to conclude all the negotiations. And we believe, we hope that after we leave here, we'll be able to meet with you and the team again, hopefully in Hawaii or back at his home in Oregon, either way, uh, to finalize these subsidiary agreements that needs to be concluded. In terms of continuing resolution, we also request that in the event that that doesn't take place, because if it doesn't happen, it will cause a lot of economic uh, uh, hardship for us to especially tap into the current uh, 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 trust fund that we have that is already limited. So we're looking forward to conclude the uh, compact negotiation in these few weeks. Otherwise, we're requesting the Congress to give us the extension, uh, continuing resolution to continue while we continue the negotiation. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, uh, can you, sir, and I'm sorry, this is not your job, really. But do you see, what do you see, you know, forward for members of Congress who are very supportive, sir, of your concern, uh, but do not see a way out, uh, way for getting, let me rephrase my question. Let me ask this way. Besides additional compensation for the nuclear legacy uh, of the United States uh, in the Republic of the Marshall Islands, uh, is the Marshall Islands government satisfied with the other sections of the compact agreement? Uh, I think you said this earlier, but I just want to make sure we... Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Co-Chair. Uh, yes, uh, in the written statement, uh, and also the brief uh, verbal statement that I made, uh, this, the MOU, it's a good document, and we can make it better. Uh, the compensation issue, there's other ways to address it, as I also made it uh, in my verbal statement and also in the written statement. Change circumstance is a way to address it. It's called for under the treaty. So I think this is a way forward, and we sent a letter to Ambassador Yoon trying to see if we can uh, uh, tweak some of that, in incorporating it to conclude a, a compact while we continue to negotiate the change circumstance petition with the Congress as called for. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, my time is up, but really all of you, thank you for today's hearing. It's really informative, I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair, you back. And to your question as to the other provision of the uh, uh, compact, we thank you for your assistance. The RMI negotiations may not be completed expeditiously on a very tight time frame, so Thoughts on that, uh, Mr. President? I'll just go right down the line. Thank you, Congressman Case. Uh, first of all, it is critical for us for the compact to be passed by September 30th. Um, timely passing is the most critical thing and why we are here in Washington. So uh, we want it done by September 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Gaze, and thank you for hosting our citizens in the beautiful state of Hawaii as well. Uh, our aim have always been and remain to be to conclude this along with our brothers and sisters. Rowing on the same boat back home gives strength to the community. We want that to be the case here. But because of the outstanding that we're still trying to deal with and trying to resolve for Marshall Islands, uh, if it has to be, we have to wait till it's it resolved. So we'll go that route. But our aim is to remain with our brothers and sisters from Palau and FSM to conclude the same. Uh, I think we, we sent a letter to our uh, Ambassador Yoon 
and trying to resolve some of these issues, especially the personal injuries. People are dying. People have died without their full compensation. And you look at Nevada at this side, and all of them have been paid fully. Why can't that be accorded the same to the Marshall Islands? I, I understand yeah. all of that, Mr. And Speaker. I'm just asking kind of directly, um, there would be, it would be very difficult for us to wait on your Ohana um, if we have not concluded with you. And is that okay with you? Or do you think somehow we should defer all of these? RMI shouldn't be holding FSM and Palau in this regard. But it is, I'll repeat it, it is our goal and hope that we will be concluding the same after a little more discussion with Ambassador Yoon. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Falcon. Thank the witnesses for their valuable testimony and the members for their questions. The members of the committee have some, may have some additional questions for the witnesses and we will ask you to respond to these in writing. Under committee rule three, members of the committee must submit questions to the committee clerk by 5 p.m. Friday, July 21, 2023. The hearing record will be held open for 10 business days for these responses. If there is no further business, without objection, the committee stands adjourned. <laughs>